I've been thinking a lot this last month that perhaps I should be married. That I've been uh, neglecting a man's duty all these years. I'm certainly old enough. In fact, I'm, I'm passing into what you might call the ungainly age. Young people are starting to call me sir, or more often uncle. And old people are starting to ask me if I remember things that I shouldn't. But the more I think about popping the question to Sophie, the more it makes me think that young Billy Rumble had a point when his father was pestering him to get married. It is all right for you, father, he said. You married mother. But if I get married, I got to marry a strange woman. And that's my trouble. I can't seem to get to know the woman I'd like to marry. Sophie Watkinson. She's a widow. And I know she wants to get married again. And I know she likes me. And I know Grandpa and Grandma Walcott would like to have me for a son-in-law. But every time I work up enough courage to speak to Sophie, Something happens to put her on the outs with me. The last waltz. Like that time at the wedding at Hartley's Harbor last week. When I went to ask her for the last waltz. Nurse Plumtree out. No, not Nurse Plumtree. She'll think I mean something by it. I want to be a gentleman. She's all alone. Grandma Walcott promised she'd explain it was her fault I ended up dancing the last waltz with old Nurse Plumtree at the Hartley's Harbor dance. But Sophie seemed to have such a good time with O.B. Grimes after he cut me out. I figured it was time I made my move and popped the question. Grandpa Walcott decided it should be done the following Sunday, when Sophie be out all bright and titivated on her way to church. You'll miss her. She just come out of the house. I don't think it's the right time to ask her. Nonsense. It's the perfect time. Here, Grandma Walker sent this over. Matches your toy, look. I don't know, Grandpa. Go on. You'll be late. Go on. Go on. Go on. Behind me, I don't want to be late. You're going to church too? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Sophie, about that last waltz at the wedding. Good heavens, what's that doing there? Jethro Noddy's old wreck. 
Some young devil skins must have hauled it up here last night. No one ever wanted to be on their way to church this morning. Say, we could go around the other way. No, no, it's all right, really. Here, take my hand. Took my weight. Should have no trouble with yours. I knew every time I tried to get on the right side of Sophie, something was bound to go wrong. But I figured that business in the church lane had finished me for good. Grandma and Grandpa Walcott weren't about to give up on their daughter, though. And they gave me a big hint how I might get back with her again. Next Tuesday, it is her birthday. Tuesday coming. That's right. She'll be about... Uh, oh, but your tongue. It's not up to you to be telling a woman's age, especially at hers. Well, she's at an age when a young widow was thinking about getting married again. How's that? When she told you she was thinking about that? Yesterday. And you better do something about it quick. Obi Grimes was over from Hartley's Harbor again and brought her a silk scarf. Had a picture of a man and woman on it, doing an old-fashioned walk. Did she like it? Of course she liked it. Women thinks a lot about things like that, you know. Why don't you get her something with a talking about? A rose or a broken heart or something. Oh, come on into the house. I got a fresh rhubarb pie. Could get her one of them silk pillowcases with Niagara Falls on it. That'd be nice. Hmm? Yeah. Oh. Morning, Suze. See you, Lance. Very, uh, very busy in there today? Nobody in there on his side, as far as I can see. He's as cranky as ever. A lovely day. Yeah. Good morning, Silas. Have you got any number 10 shotgun shells in stock? You know very well I don't. You asked me that before. Why don't you get a 12 gauge like everyone else? No, no, my, my old shotgun is too good to give up on yet. Where, uh, where'd you get all this stuff to, Silas? Pepper fella down the coast last week. Don't know if I sell much of it, though. Love the giver. That's nice. How much would something like that be now? That? Seven dollars. Seven dollars? Genuine porcelain, made in Czechoslovakia. What do you do with that, Eli? You're not buying that, are you? Look, leave the customers alone. <laughs> he wants to buy it, it's his business. It's a present for his new love. Old Nurse Plumtree, is it, Eli? Nurse Plumtree? Didn't you see her smiling off at him when he asked her for the last waltz at the wedding? Look, I'm not interested in Nurse Plumtree. Well, she's interested in you. 
She's been waiting to examine you for years. That's not saying much. She's been waiting to examine every man over in Hartley's Harbor. Yes, and considering the kind of men they got over there, they're not saying much for old Plumtree. <laughs> <laughs> well, speak of the devil. I bought this jar from you when I was over here last week, and there's a piece out of the rim. It's not only dangerous, it's unsanitary. It wasn't like that when you bought it. I didn't come all the way over here to be called a liar, Silas Bartle. I want my money this minute, and I expect to be paid for the boat ride, too. Eli here will probably take you over for nothing. I'll thank you to mind your own business, then, Prior. If I want any favors done around here, I'll ask for them myself. Now, give me my money back this instant, or I'll have the law on you. That jar was broken, and well, you know it. Here. Do your business on your own side of the water in future. Uh, and don't come over here accusing me of selling damaged goods. Oh, my. What a perfectly beautiful cookie jar, Mr. Whitten. A present for someone, perhaps? Well, uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, my grandmother. Down in Fortune Bay. I haven't bought her a present this 20 years. Oh, I always knew you were a kind and thoughtful man, Mr. Whitten. Not like most of the others around these parts. If you're planning to buy that jar here, I'd take a good look at it to make sure it's not damaged. Uh, you're into it now, Eli. She thinks he's kind and thoughtful. <laughs> <laughs> and there's Plumtree. Yes. <laughs> when I grow too old to dream, I'll have you. <laughs> <laughs> I realized it was useless trying to do any private shopping in Silas Bartle's store with busy bodies like Finn Pryor hanging around. But since I probably have to go to Levi Grimes' store in Hartley's Harbor to get the number 10 shells I needed, I figured I might as well use the excuse to find Sophie a nice birthday present over there without anybody from Pigeon Inlet finding out what I was up to. over to Hartley's Harbour by any chance, would you? Well, what would I be doing going over there, Suze? The nurse asked me if I had any old medicine jars, and I promised I'd get this one over to her today. The nurse? Oh, you can drop it off with the servant girl at the boarding house. All right. That's no trouble now, is it? No trouble. I had to go over anyway. You should have a warmer jacket on. That wind is cold. I'll be all right. Take care of yourself.
Not much call for number 10 shells these days, Eli. It's not. Nice, eh? Peddler feller here last week. I'll let you have that for seven dollars. Uh, shells and all. Seven dollars. Why would an old bachelor like you be buying something like that, Eli? You mind your own business and bring them onions down to Irwin's. They need them for supper. My poor old grandmother down in Fortune Bay. I haven't given her a present this 20 year. Your grandmother? Yeah. Hey! You forgot your shells! Thanks, Willis, my son. But I got to go back anyway. I just remembered I got a message to deliver for Sue's battle. A message from Pigeon and Bet for Nurse Plumtree. The seven girls should have invited you in. It's almost supper time. Well, I, I should really be getting uh, back. I, I got some salmon at the top on my way home. Oh, nonsense. I have no one for company. Oh, come in. Yeah. Let me take your jacket. And your cap. Here, hang these in the hall. And open the parlor door. The parlor? Yes, the parlor. And light the fire while you're there. The fire? Why will Miss Skimple say? I'll answer to Miss Skimple. Go. Now, Eli, I'll go and see what we have in the larder. I thought we'd move in here. It's so much nicer than in the kitchen. It's uh, more, oh, oh, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Cooler? Mm, no, no. Romantic. <laughs> That's the word I was trying to think of. Oh, you're not going to finish your pie? Well, that was my third piece. I suppose it isn't as good as Grandma Walcott makes. Oh, no, it, it was fine. Uh, really? They say the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Do you believe that? Well, I, uh, I suppose as good a way as any, but I, uh... Oh, but what, Eli? Well, I'm not that fond of sweets. That's strange. It is. Yes, because you're a very sweet man. I am. Why, yes, you came all the way from Pigeon Inlet today to bring oh, me... Yes. That was nothing, sir. <laughs> I, I do that for anyone. But you haven't done it for anyone before, have you? Not that. No. 
What? Don't mock me for. Oh, you poor, dear, foolish man. Don't be shy. I understand. You understand? The last waltz at the wedding. Telling those lies about a present for your grandmother before all those men. A present? Yes, a present. And you want me to do what it says, don't you? Do? Do what? Love the giver. No. Wait. Don't be shy, Eli. There's been a mistake. See, Sue's bad. It's not a mistake, Eli. Oh, you won't regret this. Now, Eli, I understand you're shy, but there's no need to be. Now, hey, Eli. Eli, please, sit down and, and, and let me... Look, Eli! Don't be shy. Wait. Grandma Walcott said the third time is always lucky. So she sent Grandpa down to Silas Bartles to buy one of his cookie jars and wrapped it up in a fancy package. She said the only thing left for me to do was to meet Sophie next Sunday and start all over again. Take that right back to Harkness Harbor with you. Mm -hmm. 